Hello, and welcome back to musictrainer.com. This is Rufus Philpot. So today, we're going to talk a little bit about an introduction to bass technique, uh, developing good technique for both your left and your right hands on the bass. In my previous lesson with you, we looked at the G major scale, shifting across the fingerboard, just learning how to intelligently use shifting to get you from one part of the fingerboard to the next on the bass. Now, as you're moving around the instrument, it's obviously important that you maintain good technique. And having good technique uh, has many benefits. Obviously, it means you're efficient with how you move around the instrument. But also, it tends to lead to a better tone and sound on the bass. Uh, something that some of my students ask me is, oh, how you get this certain tone out of the instrument? And often, they're equating that with the, uh, the sound from the electronics on the bass. And whilst the, uh, the EQ settings and the pickups and the woods and all this contribute to the sound, and in fact, I talked about that in a previous lesson, it's really important that your technique is good too because that helps you generate a really strong sound from the instrument. So we're going to look at some ways just to build up the technique and maintain it on your instrument today. So the first thing we're going to look at is the left hand. Now, for those of you at home sitting and you're playing a right-handed instrument like me, obviously your left hand is the one that's on the fingerboard. I'm actually left-handed, but for me, uh, I always found it seemed natural for me to play this way around um, because if you think about it, this hand is the one on the fingerboard that's doing the most work. So the hand that's fretting the notes, really we've got to spend some time with. Now, when you're actually placing your fingers onto the fingerboard, it's really important to play with the tips of the fingers. And the fingers should ideally be right behind the fret like this. So you notice as I do that, I get a clean sound right behind the fret as I play it. If I travel up the fingerboard like this, you see, I get a clean sound. I'm really making sure that as I move across the neck, you can't really hear any slides or noise as I move between different positions. Now, one of the ways to actually develop strength and uh, facility in the hand is like this, is practicing arpeggios. Now, arpeggios can be the notes in a chord, i.e. more than one note played at a time, but we play them individually. So we looked at the G major scale previously. So what we're gonna look at today to start off with is a basic three note arpeggio, just a major triad. Now, the major triad consists of a root, the major third, and the fifth of the chord, which goes like this. So let's look at the G major scale again, and we'll break it down. So here's G major. G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G. Now, if we start at the G, the root of the scale, then we play the third note in the scale, one, two, three, the B, and then the fifth, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, we get these notes, G, B, D. Now, those three notes make up a basic G major chord. You can often hear this played in music like this. Now, if we play these individually, we get this sound. And we can play this over more than one octave. Check this out. G, B, D, G, B, D, G. Now, you notice as I shifted, you didn't re really hear too much noise. And notice my fingers are staying really close to the fingerboard. Watch that again. G, B, D. Now I can shift here to my second finger again. G, B, D. And then I end up on the top G here with my fourth finger. Now I could play that with any finger. If I wanted to move further up the neck, I could play with my first. G, B, D, G, B, D, G. I could keep going. G, B, D. And if I wanted to, the G here. Now, this starts to teach us the whole range of the fingerboard. We're taking a three note pattern and just learning it all over the bass. And we're really maintaining good technique. Notice as I do this, the fingers are staying really close to the strings. See my, my fourth finger, the pinky, is not flying away from the neck. This is really important because often when students come to me, they're trying to play scales or arpeggios or ideas, and the fingers are moving really far away from the fingerboard. So look at this. And you can see how the thumb just stays there to support the fingers at the front of the neck. 
and that way you'll get a good strong sound and your hands won't tire out. Also, if you do that too, it means that you can have a greater span, a greater stretch on the instrument. I have pretty small hands, but if you maintain good technique, you can still play pretty widespread chords or ideas. For instance, like this kind of idea. See, I'm just playing like a major nine chord here. But my thumb is sitting like that. So that means I've got good support for the fingers. There's no noise, no buzz here. It's clean. And it's quite a big stretch, but like that means I'm able to do that. So really concentrate on like hand position when you try these things. So that was the arpeggio. We'll play that for you one more time. Let's see if we can play it together. One, two, three, four. G, B, D, G, B, D, G. Now, as we play that, there's quite a lot of other things to think about too. The right hand. Now, with the right hand on the bass, same kind of principles apply. It's economy of movement, keeping your fingers close to the strings. A lot of people think if you're playing something fast, you've got to move the fingers further away from the strings, but that's actually really the last thing you want to do. You want to actually have the fingers as close to the strings as you can and still get a good sound. If you notice, you can get a great sound out of the bass with this finger already sitting on the string. Check this out. See, it's a good strong tone. My finger's actually resting on the string before I pluck it. I'm not taking a run up to the string by having my finger an inch or two away from the string and plucking into it. I'm actually doing this. And if I was to play a continuous line, you can see there, everything's staying really, really close to the strings. And as I play faster, I'm not moving my fingers further from, away from the strings. If anything, they're getting closer. But I'm still getting a strong sound, and you notice I was varying the volume too. We're starting off like this. So you can see it's really important to be efficient with this. So let's apply this to that simple three note arpeggio, the G major arpeggio. So watch what I do with the right hand. Now, there's a couple of things going on here. You probably noticed that another thing I do is have a floating thumb idea here where my thumb skips over the strings. And if I'm moving a lot, it kind of glides and just kind of lightly rests against the string. But if I'm playing something static, i.e. repeating a note or a line, the thumb will actually come into rest slightly more onto the string. And I'll put about a quarter inch of the thumb to rest on the string. You can actually see this kind of little calloused area on the tip of my thumb here. And that's where that rests into the string. But again, it's important that we stress that it's resting on the string. It's not pushing into it. You're not anchoring your thumb. There's not any force involved with that. If you start doing that, you get way too much pressure on your wrist, on your tendons. So let's say I was playing just a little repeating line, something like this. You can see here, as I'm playing this, my thumb is resting slightly diagonally onto the string. And that means that I've got some support for my hand. And you can see there as I'm playing this, I'm keeping these fingers very close to the strings as I'm doing that. So let's look at that triad, that arpeggio, the G major one again. And notice how my thumb moves up the strings as I move across the neck. So I start, this is obviously a five string bass. So I'm resting my thumb here on the B string, on the low string. And here's our G. So I pluck that with my first finger. My thumb is already resting here. Now, we can do this. You see how I bring my thumb up and across the strings as I move further up the neck? I'll do this again. Now, if I stop this high note, which is your D here, notice there's no ringing from the other strings because they're all damped by this. This is a really good idea. See, nothing ring. my top G. Stop. It's clean.